Hello, Rim the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize, and the ranks of the resistance against Mystery Babylon are growing all around the world. This is episode number 365. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake, and I'm in the KIB studio today with the love of my life, Mary Lou. Hi, folks. We're in a blessed condition today because we got a lot of rain yesterday. <laughs> and I know that that's, that's been problematic for a lot of people, and we're sure praying for those that have experienced floods and stuff. But we were really far behind on our levels here, and especially in where we live and, and where the ministry is and everything. There was an abundance of rain yesterday. and Yeah, we would call it a gully washer. <laughs> and it, what was, um, it, it was a lot of rain at once, but what I noticed is it, it pooled up you know, everywhere, but then it, it just soaked right down into the ground. So it was very, very dry. So we needed that, and we thank God for it. Um, we pray that you guys are having having the water that you need. And uh, I heard this morning as I was going through some news that I uh, Mississippi, I believe it was, one of the they're cities there, really they, they, I don't even think that they're going to have drinking water. And I think it was like they said 200,000 people. Um, so we've got to really be praying these, and you know, a flood is devastating because not only is it the, the horrors of having that, all that water there and, and people lose their lives, but then the cleanup of that is unbelievable because of mold and, and things like that. You'll have sewer water yes, and everything that's else right. that's in it. Yeah. So they're, they're in our prayers and we ask you guys to be praying with us. Um, today, what we're talking about links right back to what we were talking about last podcast. Uh, I, I didn't know it was going to go together, but it was just it just fell into place. You know, last, last week we talked about uh, Peter and how Jesus told him that, you know, the enemy wanted to sift him like wheat. And then uh, later on, Peter was talking about how the uh, adversary goes around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may de- devour. And we were saying that those are, you know, Sometimes you're in a refiner's fire before God mightily uses you. And um, I was looking, that's what God was, was talking to me about this time, because he's mentioned this to me for years. But way years ago, he told me that we would come to a day that he would raise up uh, prophetic voices that would speak judgment, and, and people would fall dead like they did in the Bible. And, you know, that was so hard for me to even imagine. It, I, I'd hear it several times, and I thought, who in the world could God trust to, to get up and speak, you know, something so serious as that? Because, I mean, you'd, you'd have some people trying to abuse that, you know. Oh, big time. And, and so it would have to be somebody that had been through such a refiner's fire uh, that they would be able to do that and know 100% that it was God's direction and, and what they were doing. Or you could you could have witchcraft trying to be used to to kill people you know if it was a, a wrong setting the wrong person and so i've always thought that was so serious but um he was talking to me about you know like i'd go back and i was looking through the prophets that would speak judgment and in you know in the time of jonah god sent him to nineveh and then they repented and so then that Judgment was pushed down the road. Later on, I guess they fell back in because then they they were destroyed later. And then even Ahab, as evil as he was, uh, when he prayed and humbled himself, then the judgment was held back until the days of his son. Now, to me, that would be the worst thing. I mean, it, it looked like, oh, you know, it's it, it wasn't really relief in my eyes because the worst thing to me would be is something you've done is going to pass down to your kids. You know, that's what I've tried to do all these years is – is try to repent for anything on the family lines, anything I'd done, so that my kids would not have to pay a price for for that. Um, but then there were other times when there was immediate judgment, like with Nadab and Abihu, where they brought the strange fire in, yes. you know, and they were serving as, as priests. And then Uzzah, we talked about that a few podcasts ago, where he uh, tried to steady the Ark and touch the Ark of the Covenant, as it was being transported in a wrong way, <laughs> and he died. And then I was uh, there. Well, you know, when you when you look at all this, you know, when you look at uh, the sons of Aaron, 
they were dealing with something that was very foundational and very, very holy. Mm -hmm. And because of that, there was, there was a dramatic judgment over that. Uh, you know, it's the same thing with the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant represented the very throne of God on the earth, and God was very specific on how it was supposed to be treated. I think that when we're, we're entering a time that we have lost the concept of the holiness of God, and there's not a lot of things that are what we would consider holy to the church anymore. And when God begins to reestablish holiness about things, we need to understand that as he does that, there is a corresponding level of responsibility that we have mm -hmm. of respecting that holiness because there will be consequences. Yeah, I believe that. Well, and then, you know, I, I look back at Ezekiel 11 again, um, and I'll just take a couple of, of the verses. In verse 2, it says, uh, Then said he unto me, Son of man, these are the men that devise mischief and give wicked counsel in this city. So somebody that's given counsel is going to affect a lot of people. So then you go down to uh, verse 12, and it says, And ye shall know that I am the Lord, for ye have not walked in my statutes, neither executed my judgments, but have done after the manners of the heathen that are round about you. And it came to pass when I prophesied that Palatia, the son of Benaiah, died. Then fell I down upon my face and cried with a loud voice and said, Ah, Lord God, wilt thou make a full end of the remnant of Israel? And so there was an, another situation where, you know, I think things build. And I think that, that that's where we're at right now. I think things have built to such a place that I think we're going to see things in the Bible that we've not seen before. Yes. I think God is, is to a, a place to where the, the cup of iniquity is full. It's flowing over. Uh, and I do think that we're going to see modern day events like this, that somebody's going to get up and totally empowered by the, the power of God um, and the anointing to speak forth, you have done this. And God says, this is the last day that you will ever do this. And I think that we'll see it. And I know that's probably scary for people, but I think, I think it would take a lot for that to happen. Um, you know, we've got the, um, the instance of Ananias and Sapphira in the New Testament. And I think that that, I mean, that had to be really something that they were laying the foundation for the church. And I think that what they did was so grievous because of that, that I think that it was another one of those times when it God would, says, It would have severely have tainted mm -hmm. the very foundation of, of the new body. Yeah, it would That's have. right. And so um, I wanted to talk about some things after that, uh, but you wanted to, I think you had some things you were going to go into before I talked about the... Yeah, when, when we're looking at the, the sifting of Peter, I want to read uh, Luke uh, 22, 31, and 32 out of the Amplified Bible. And it says, Simon, Simon, Peter, listen. Satan has asked exclusively that all of you be given over to him out of the power and keeping of God, that he might sift all of you like grain. But I have prayed especially for you, Peter, that your own faith may, be, may not fail. And when you yourself have returned again, strengthen and establish your brethren. Now, you know, you dealt last week about the, the sifting means to uh, not only to shift and to sake like in a, in a sieve, uh, but by inward uh, agitation to the to one's trying one's faith to the very verge of of overthrow to try to overthrow your faith. There there are two different testings that happens in the Word of God. One of them, and we're going to get into this in a minute, that God tests you. But also, you know, we 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 re learn from the Book of Job. You know, Job. It was it was almost like a bet between God and Job and Satan over whether Job would remain faithful to him or not, and at the end, Job there was a promotion that came because of of Job remaining true. It's the same thing here with Peter, that Peter had hoof and mouth disease, or foot and mouth disease, if you will, that every time you were turning around, he was putting his foot in his mouth, and you know I've I've heard people talk about you know. You know, the baptism of the Holy Spirit after the day of Pentecost, that cured Peter. I think that that was a component of it. But I think because he went through this time of testing, 
that Jesus said, listen, the devil's going to come and he's going to test you. He's going to push you to the place where it's almost like you're, you're, you're about ready to give up your faith. He's, there's going to be that level. And, but I've, I've been praying for you, and the Bible says that he ever liveth to make an intercession for us. And I, you, you can imagine, he said, before the cock crows three times, you're, you're going to deny me three times. We dealt with how Jesus came and said three times, do you love me? Mm-hmm. Each time that was healing Ooh, yeah. to him. Yeah. And, there, and there was restoration. Yeah, that was. It's because of what he went through and remained faithful. Mm-hmm that positioned him to preach on the day of Pentecost. Peter not only opened the door to the Jewish assembly to receive Messiah on the day of Pentecost and receive salvation, he opened the door at Cornelius' home. He opened it to the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. To his own surprise and shock, you know. He he went back to Jerusalem and said, I don't know. These Gentiles, you know, they just... They accepted Jesus, and then they started speaking in tongues and doing all the things like, how how can I argue with that? You know, you you can almost see him almost saying, I can't quite figure out what God's doing, but he he did something miraculous. It was the sifting, that trial that he went through, and and it it was like he was holding on to Jesus by a thread, even though he denied him Mary three times. I don't know him. I don't know him. No, and finally cussed like a sailor, if you will, and I don't know him. He even went back to some of his old ways. You know, after the resurrection, you know where they found him? He was fishing. He went back to his, his, okay, I've I've given up on this. I'm going to go back to this. But because Jesus prayed for him, he remained true. We need to understand that when the, the, the enemy has to, if you will, conserve energy and conserve ammunition. We all need to understand this. He is, he is not limitless like God. He hits you hard because he's afraid mm-hmm. of what you're going to be. Boy, that's right. And what God wants done for you. And then we see Peter opening the door to the Jewish community, opening it to the Gentile community, announcing, uh, announcing judgment on Ananias Sapphira. But not only does the enemy judge, but God also judges. And this is found in Deuteronomy 8. And this, this is why this is so important because it's actually going to go to the uh, when Satan tried to sift Jesus. Okay, and This is found in, in Deuteronomy 8, 1 through 3. Every commandment that I command you today, you must carefully, you must be careful to observe that you may live and multiply and go and possess the land that the, the Lord your God swore to your fathers. And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way of these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and test you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. So he humbled you and allowed you to hunger and fed you with manna that you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he may make you know that man shall not live by bread alone. But man lives by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Now, what's so important about this? Jesus, after he was baptized by John, the Bible says that he was driven by the Spirit of God into the wilderness, and the devil showed up and tempted him. Jesus quotes this out of Deuteronomy. He said, sucker, I know exactly what you're doing. You're here to sift me because you're afraid of what I'm going to do. And you know what? I've already learned this lesson. It's not by what I put in my mouth that I live, but it's by the word of God. You know, those three temptations. Now you have angels coming to minister to Jesus. But it said that Satan left him for a season. That's all he could handle. Mm -hmm. And Satan had to recover. Yeah, I believe that. And that when Jesus came out of that wilderness, Mary... It said he came under the power of the Holy Spirit. Now listen to me, guys. There's been some of you have been to hell and back. Yeah. And you feel like you're literally holding on to the last string of holding on to God. But you have determined in your heart, I will hold on to him. I will be faithful to him no matter what. That's right. And I'm here to tell you that although you were tested, you have been found worthy 
Yes, faithful. You have been found faithful. And because of that, there are promotions coming. God, That's right. all of this, because let me tell you something, there's, there's chaff in all of our lives. All of us are fleshly. Oh, my goodness, all of us are fleshly. I tell Mary a lot of times I've got to be careful because the military will show back up and at times where it shouldn't, you know. And we're all fleshly, and we want. And it's so easy for the devil to want to get us in the flesh. But in the times that God really needs to use us, that flesh has got to be set aside mm-hmm. so that the power of God can move and that we don't taint what God is doing. Mary, how many times have you and I have seen people that had never yielded to the testing, that had never learned from the testing, or maybe never had been gone through the testing, that started out with a prophetic word and ended up that prophetic word being in the flesh. It's like it took a left turn somewhere by by Cincinnati. It's like, man, this is straight on, this is straight on. Where in the world did you get that from? And then sometimes a prophetic word that you sensed was true, and then others were Totally out, off balance. Yeah. I mean, it's it's been an odd thing to witness all these things through the years. Because you can you can prophesy out of your own spirit. Mm-hmm. Um, the Bible talks about that. In fact, in hearing the voice of God, guys, you can hear the God, God's voice, the voice of your own desire, and the voice of the enemy. Mm-hmm. And it, it takes some testing and trying and some sifting to get to the place where you have learned which one's God, which one's your own desires, yeah, and which one's the devil. Well, I think, too, through... You know, decades now, um, Satan has been wounding people to such a degree that, you know, it's hard for for people that have been so pressed down and felt worthless to not spring and go overboard to where you you get to a place you're not going to take it anymore and you and you think you're above correction. And, you know, you see all kinds of situations and understand why people are that way oh absolutely but boy satan will take advantage of everyone you know he he does the wounded wounding and then he takes advantage of the woundedness and he knows what buttons to push and how to get us um in a bad place really he's the one who does the damage so that he can use it to Mm -hmm. you and become your accuser later on but the good news is though is uh god said that uh there are people that have stayed faithful yes through all these times and and he told me that there are tumultuous times ahead but those that are faithful to god are going to be sustained yes and so don't don't let what you're hearing right now rock your world it's hard not to if you listen to the the news and i'm not just talking regular news i'm talking you know all the the ministries that are or understanding what's going on. If you know about the New World Order, if you know about um, the Great Reset, if you know about those things, it just looks like it is just yeah. file and order, you know. But it's not It's not went the way they wanted it to. No. There's been interruptions, and I, I perceive that there's going to be many interruptions, like like God told me the, the smackdown. Well, um, when, you, when you look at things, the world leaders are, have, there, there has been a madness take hold. It's like, you know, with this with this thing with Russia, uh, all their energy comes from Russia. And so now they're, they're, they're causing their own problems. There was one with the Netherlands. Not only are they wanting to go completely green as far as energy, uh, they're wanting to get rid of the very fertilizers that their farmers need, which is setting the stage for, uh, for starvation. And, you know, one of the things that I don't think that we have ever thought of is when you look at the four horsemen in the book of Revelation, that we would have nations literally set the stage for those so that it's not just, not just a, a natural occurrence, let's say like a, a great disaster, but it's the very things that they're implementing that are going to cause uh, these things, you know, whether it's... Well, uh, I think they're trying, but I think when the... When, uh, God says there's judgment. It's going to be different. They'll be swift. This and, is this yeah. is the elite trying to manipulate for their agenda. Exactly. That's that's what they're and doing. And that's one of the things L.A. and I have said for, for a good number of years is that they're going to try to fabricate the tribulation period before the time not only to gain power, but then 
after, you know, at the end, you know, this thing goes on longer than seven years, and it's not Jesus that shows back, it's UFOs, and the next thing you know, you have the Antichrist and all this stuff, it completely discredits the body of Christ, and it's a part of the great delusion. Yeah, I believe that. I believe they're going to try to do that, but I, I think that we're getting ready to see an outpouring of God's power like nothing we've ever seen. Yes. And there are other people I trust that have, have said the same thing. And I, th- I think most people are saying, yes, these perilous times are here. And, and it, I believe that it will take an act of God to turn Step. around yes. the, the problems with the food. Um, you know, it, it could be that, that there's a plan that I, I don't know about that God could do, but I, I think that wisdom demands that we would prepare and I've always thought that from the very beginning of when I first heard God say that judgment was coming um, and I and I think that that's in whatever capacity you can you know if buy some extra food um, you know I made a list a long time ago and typed it out of all the things and what I, I, I tried to and we're in an Amish community around us and so it's kind of easy to look at that and look at their properties and see what you'd have to do if the grid was down. Mm-hmm. What you'd have to do. I mean, they now they they buy at the store. You know, they don't they don't go like full out like they used to, where they they didn't go outside their community and they they go. To the, I've seen them buying tons of white bread, haven't you? And I don't know, maybe they feed that to the, other day to I, the ducks or the something. The other day I was in there, and there was the, all they had was a grocery cart with nothing but sugar in it. I mean, the entire thing was full of sugar. Well, that's because they get ready to do canning and yeah. stuff. Um, but you can, you know, I've I've watched them through the years. I've read a lot of a lot of websites. Um, but I think the key is going to be if we get to a place that that it is very severe and we have to feed people like God has told me before. Um, I think it's going to be a community effort. You know, not everybody can grow everything, but yeah. but you can bring come together and yeah. let's be let's be truthful, Mary. There are some people that cannot grow grass. Okay, so they're not gifted, in, in but they, they may be a wonderful carpenter. That, oh, that's that's, that's part of the Christian that's community it. is that we is that when you have a community based around the Word of God, each one is using their talents. One may be great in, in raising cattle. Uh, one may be great in, in mechanical things, and it's all uh, the body of Christ is going to have to come together like never before. Mm-hmm. I agree with that, but I think we're going to do it, yeah. and I think that God will sustain those that have have remained faithful to Him through no telling what. I mean, there are people went through such horrendous events, Mike, that that it it um, it's amazing that they made it. Yes, and so the fact that they stay faithful to God, I mean, He He looks down on that. With favor, and I think that's what we're going to have is we're going to have favor, and we're going to. I think we're going to have somehow in the midst of this. I've always believed, um, and heard God say several times that there would be transfers of wealth, and I don't know exactly how that would come about. Um, I don't know if like these, you know, the elite have stores of of uh, food, maybe that will be just opened up and given to the Pope. There's all kinds of things that God can do. He sees so much more than we can. But I, I'm not, I'm not uh, worried at all. And that may seem like that. And it's not that I don't care because I am, I'm planning on doing whatever God tells me to do, but I, I'm not concerned. I just know he's got a plan, and I trust him. I don't trust the government. I don't trust most people, but I trust him. Mm-hmm. And, and he's faithful. He is faithful to us. And... Yeah. I, I think part of that is is there's there's a lot of things that's going to have to happen. Uh, there's going to be a maturity that God is developing in the body of, of people that have pressed through. You know, there was uh, I remember back when I was doing a lot of traveling ministry, and I have you know sons and daughters in the faith as well as friends within the African American community, and some of the songs that were unique to that community, and it was like through the, the hardship and through the trial, or if it hadn't been for God, I would have lost my mind. If I hadn't been for God, I would have given up. But yet the Holy Spirit was there mm-hmm. speaking to me in the darkness saying, That's right. I'm going to get you through. And I held on to that hope. Mary, there, there's something happens when, when we go through things like that. It changes uh, it changes our worldview. It changes our paradigm. You know, it's almost like soldiers coming back from, from war. They're 
uh, they have a different outlook on things because they have been through some things. And you and I, even with some of the things that we have been through, we see people that get so upset about some little something, and they're out to them because they've not been through anything. On on a scale of 1 to 10 on the Richter scale, it's like this is a 9 to them, and it's like a point zero zero nine to us. It's like, this. why are you getting upset about this for? This and, and, and the... Uh, and the the whole matter of what God is going to do in life itself, this is so trivial, and yet you're you're having a cow over it, and I, I think it's because they've never been sifted, they've never been, and those are not the ones that are going to be able to really move in the power of God and can be trusted in the power of God. It's the Mary, it's those that it were the midnight hour that thought that they were going to lose everything. And wondered if their heart was even going to beat during yeah. the night, and yeah, they held it. on to Jesus mm-hmm. with their whole hearts. And there, there was a purging. There was a, there was a burning of the chaff out of, out of, out of yeah. them, so that God says, "Listen, I know that when you seem like in the natural, you had no hope. You held on to a supernatural hope. When you felt like you had no way out, you knew that I was the way maker, and you held on to me." You may felt like you were grabbing onto my zizi and I had to drag you through this situation, but you wouldn't let go. Because of that, because of that, I can now trust you to speak only what I say, and you have learned to separate what you want from what I want. Mm See that that's going that's going to be the the really the pivotal thing in the days ahead because the next thing that we're going to be getting into, uh, you know, there there are times when the Holy Spirit pulls back so that we press into Him more. There there's there is oh there's there is the Bible says that we need to seek Him while He may be found, that He is a diligent rewarder of those who diligently seek Him, and. We, especially within the charismatic movement, and, and you and I are both spirit-filled. We believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We've moved in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We're tongue talkers. I mean, the whole nine yards. But at the same time, over the years, we have seen things that we knew were not God. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's, it's almost like you, you get this machine going, and you have to keep the machine stoked, and you're looking for any manifestation and, and I have seen manifestations in churches that if this would have been back, let's say, in the 70s with some of the people that mentored me and some of the people that I said in their services, they would have shut it down and begin casting out devils. Now they're saying this is the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. And guys, we, we have got to have discernment because the, the New Age movement has infiltrated uh, the body of Christ. All the way across the board, communism has infiltrated. We have we have uh, Indian mysticism, every every form of the mystery religions in one shape, form or another. And you can say, well, I'm going to run to a Baptist church, and and to be safe there. Well, how many Freemasons do they have? Right. You know, it's it's and it's it's the other end of the spectrum where there there's not a lot of the moving of the spirit allowed. Yes. You know, and we've we've seen all of it, and so. You get and you get our age. You you get a perspective, and uh, God talked to me this week about um, how the church had been weakened, and He said that many have experienced euph- euphoric feelings in services and have confused it with the move of God. He said that there is a spirit of euphoria. Yes, and you know, like to compare that to joy, you know, when you when you feel godly joy, it. It's not flighty. Uh, it's it's very solid. It's very warm. It's very um, you. It's a godly joy. Well, it's the same thing with the peace of God. We have peace that passes understanding. Then, in the midst of the storm, I know He has a hold of me. That's right. Okay, and and, and solid. Isn't it's that solid. a way you would yes. describe it? Whereas euphoria is flighty. It's just you know. It's it's almost like that. Remember that little cartoon figure that the kids watched was it winnie the pooh that little tigger thing yeah and just bounce 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 um i i think that it they have so infiltrated the churches and they i think they were especially concerned about the charismatic movement because i believe that came from god and it's because the enemy was concerned they started trying to put things in yeah. And slide things in because I, I was doing some reading and I've, I've listened to tapes and read about the Kundalini spirit before. But did you know one of the of the 
things that they um, say are the manifestations of a of those that seek this is spiritual euphoria. Oh yeah. Another one's uncontrolled jerking, uh, making animal sounds. Let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit, whenever you know there there was a guy making all kinds of animal sounds, that was so wild that they couldn't bind him with chains. When Jesus showed up, all that stopped. Okay, it didn't start when Jesus showed up. It stopped when Jesus showed up. The Holy Spirit is not going to make you buck like a bronco. He's not going to. He's not going to make you bark like a dog. All these different things. This this is a manifestation of a, of another spirit. It, it, he's not here to make you feel euphoric. You know, if you're if you're if you're struggling, he can give you peace. But Mary, I'm looking for the convicting power of the Holy Spirit to fall, so that people can be cleansed. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm looking for a strength where they had no strength that they can they can say, "By my God, I can run through a troop and I can jump over a wall." I'm looking for for the moving of the Holy Spirit to where you know back in and I I, I love studying revivals, and I think there and you know, I've talked about this before there were. Two supposed outpourings. One was Azusa, and I believe the Azusa Street was a real one. People walked on eggshells. They literally, when you read the writings, that preacher humbled himself, and he literally had a, a and I, I believe if I'm remembering right, it was it was like an old orange crate was kind of his pulpit. He would crawl and tuck his head into that pulpit. And just weep and cry before God and just and just seek the face of God. It wasn't about building up man. And when God began to move. Well, they had arms grow out. They had they? arms grow out. If you got if you got into that into the, into those meetings and had sin in your life, God convicted you. If you showed up again and you hadn't repented, he would call it out. In fact, the governor of California came. And an uneducated man had basically an, an, a, maybe a sixth grade, seventh grade education. Somebody gave a tongue, and all of a sudden this other tongue came out, and the, the governor was shaken. Well, part of his, he was very well educated. One of the prideful things he had was he was fluent in high Latin. This uneducated kid called out his sins in high Latin, and there was nobody in that congregation could understand it except that governor. So that was the interpretation of the tongue. That was, was the interpretation a, of the mm-hmm. tongue. And see, that's important. Yes. that That's important that we follow protocols. That's why uh, we'll probably do things a little different at our conferences than most people do. Um, you know, we follow the protocol. We do. We and do. so, and, and another thing that we that we're going to do at the conferences, and unless you're a ministry leader there, we're not going to allow anybody to lay hands on somebody else because that's where we've seen a lot of trouble get started. And not to offend anybody that's coming, uh, it's for safety of all. Safety of all. Because we have seen and we've actually had testimony of people that were in witchcraft that would come in so they could lay hands on. Mm-hmm. And so that's, I mean, there, there are safeguards that, that you have to have. Uh, you know, even the thing, if there's a prophetic word, the Bible says, let the other prophets judge, whether this is of God or not. When was the last time you had that? I mean, we, it's, for, for us to be a people of the word, it has to go back to the word. If, we, if, we're, if we're seeing a manifestation that is never shown in the word of God as good, you have to question it. You know, when I, um, I guess it was in 1995, um, I think it was before the witch crawled in the van. I was, you know, I was in that process of getting healed. And um, we went to a conference somewhere, and me and the girls went ahead of you because you had something you had to do. So I took our two girls up. Yeah, I was in Ohio. Um, and then you, you came later. Yeah. Uh, but when we, when we went there, and I was really looking forward to it, um, but I noticed some of the people started doing something that I just called it the whip. I don't know what they would have called it, but, but it was like it'd start down low and it would almost whip them up and like they'd go in this like coil. And so they started doing that. And so then later in that, in that setting, they said, now I want you to just gather in groups and just lay hands on each other and start praying. And so I grabbed my two girls and I, and I said, we're our group. 
And nobody's going to lay hands on us because I was perceiving, man, there's something wrong with this. Um, and so I remember I got up there and sat through a couple of meetings and I said, and we're done yeah, with this. We're going. Um, so, but, but now in the beginning stages, I mean, I was wanting to go everywhere in after 1994, January, when I came out in those eight months I had until I, everything came back and I had to fight my way out. You just get so excited about God. You just want to go everywhere. But the, but the more I went, I remember I was at one conference and they said, if you want to be prayed for, go go down the stairs. And I was walking down through there, and, and I heard, as a lamb being led to the slaughter. And when I got down there, then I, I stood back. And, and it was like that they, they were angry at you if you didn't fall over. And so I just kind of ended up sliding out of that. But I saw so much stuff, and I thought, oh, my word, if I hadn't, gone through this sifting <laughs> you know and and the time to learn the word and i would have i would have thought that was real yeah maybe my discernment i mean i always had discernment maybe it would have but i i don't think i would have thought it was discernment before i went through that i think i would have thought man there's something wrong with me all these people are saying this is god and there's got to be something wrong with me because i did that in the beginning you know like when i was going to church and i now i know it was discernment Back then, I just thought, man, I must be so far from God that I'm getting sick to my stomach when they're doing this stuff. But now I know it was discernment over what all yeah. was going on. But this is where we've got to have, we've got to have a cleansing of the church. That's why I believe that we're not to the very end yet, because if there's not a cleansing, Mike, it's gonna it's gonna be something out of this world happen. Yeah, there's gonna be there's not gonna be a remnant left, um, because every time you you go through one of these. You know, every time you'd have hands laid on you and a spirit's transferred or something like that, it's going to wreak yeah. havoc in your life. And and that's the, that's the indicator that I can look back on. If there is a touch of God in your life, 1994, when God did that miracle with me, I was never the same. If there is, a, is an anointing there and there is something that God has done through the laying on the hands of a, of a minister or something, you will never be the same. And you're not going to go backwards. You're going to go forwards because only God can do that. Yeah. You know, I remember this, this was back years before I met you. And there was, there was several guys that were in the barracks and, and they were carousers, you know, everything the military does. One guy, they, they prayed for it. He flopped around like a fish and everything else. And everybody said, oh, wasn't this the Holy Spirit moving and stuff? And, and the leader that was there, you could see, big question mark, uh, I don't know. Another guy came up, prayed for I think there was just one tear went down his face. That guy was changed forever. He was never the same mm -hmm. man again. The one that flopped around like a fish later on needed deliverance and stuff before he could ever get his life right. And so we, we look at these manifestations and we're so we're, we're so about the manifestations instead of what's going on in the mm -hmm. real spirit. But that guy was, was military and he, okay, I'm giving my life to God and this is it. And, and he, and he set his face like a soldier to the cross and Mary, he was a different man. Mm -hmm. So, so much so that the, the officers and stuff, I don't know what happened to you, but I like it, you know? That what you're, you're trustworthy now. We don't have to worry about you being so drunk that you can't stand up when it's time for you to do stuff. And I think sometimes we, because we, one of the things that has, that has troubled you and I both are, are people that go to the altar and they have these euphoric kind of experiences, but they never change. We've seen a lot of that. That means it was either emotionalism or a kundalini spirit. It was not, it was never the Holy Spirit. Because if the Holy Spirit takes a hold of you like something like that, you walk away different for the rest of your life. Well, and that's the image you heard. I've heard people say that that they they just did a courtesy fall. Like if somebody laid hands on their pushing on you, you know, expecting everybody to fall backwards. I don't want to embarrass the preacher. Yeah, courtesy fall. Yeah. And uh, I remember when the one of the pastors that um, I know was of God that uh, married us, he prayed for us the night night before we got married it was a wednesday night service we got married on thursday and we fell forward we we went forward and a lot of a lot of times there's nothing wrong with going forward that's what they did in the bible you know they, they'd they say they fell, they fell on, their, on face. their face and so you know the people that are trying to you know some, sometimes i think they about pushed you over 
And then some people just have, just have told me that they just failed because they're, they're pushing me over anyway. You know, so they call it slain in the spirit. But but I'm telling you that we're, we're getting ready to see the real. And I think it is going to so outshine anything counterfeit. It's going to remove doubt for a lot of yeah. people. I mean, God's getting ready to show up, guys, in a way that we've none of us have ever seen. And I know it beyond a shadow of a doubt. I, I know it. We're to that place where the things that God showed me all those years ago are, are happening. And, you know, um, to show the power of people praying, I know all our partners prayed with us about that Artemis, NASA's Artemis spaceship that was supposed yeah, to go up. go up. It didn't go up on that day. I think it was significant. It went up. It was supposed to go up on the 29th. Yeah. I think it's in conjunction with other things that, that we don't generally hear about. You know, they they keep their some of their highest level things really secret. And so when you, when you know that um, NASA has named a capsule Artemis, and they've got a date scheduled. That was not by accident. No. But it didn't make it. And so thank you guys for praying. I'm sure people all across the world that heard about that are praying. And and it shows you prayer can change it. Yeah. Asking forgiveness for the sins of everybody that works at NASA, everything that's ever been done there. Just, you know, those type of prayers break that occult power, and it can't go as planned. And see, that's what Satan, that's why you're seeing him on a rampage is because he knows that this is going to turn around. There is a turnaround coming. When, when, the, the, when the remnant wake up and return to publicity, mm-hmm. return back to the Word, mm-hmm. there becomes a, a stark contrast between true biblical living and manifestations of the Holy Spirit and all this compared to all the junk that they have. You know, Mary, when... when um, We've had revivals throughout history. You know, it's like during the Finney revivals. Um, when those happened, all the brothels closed down, all the all the taverns closed down, all these different things. In fact, sometimes businesses closed down just so people could get right with God, so they could then go back to business and stuff. When nothing, when the drug dealing doesn't change in a town, when when the prostitution doesn't change, all these things. If it doesn't change, and we're claiming that we're having revival. We're falling far short of the historic norm. It's how Satan has weakened us. Yes. But we're getting ready to be made strong by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, we are. And and guys, it's his strength. What what you went through and the flesh that got burnt off while going through it is preparing you for something for the future. Well, and even if you've been in a situation like where you look back now and think, I wonder if that was a kundalini spirit. You could just ask God to forgive yeah. you for for uh, le- letting somebody lay hands on you that wasn't right or, or participating in something you didn't know was wrong. I did that over and over and over. I tried to go through everything that every church I'd been in and ask God to cleanse me of that and, he, and commanded any spirits to leave me and in Jesus' name. And so, you know, it's not like uh, this is irreparable damage. It's just recognizing it. Is a, is a lot of the victory. Yeah. Is once you recognize it, the blood of Jesus can take care of anything. <laughs> Absolutely. It's just he Turn hides things the around. Enemy learn, hides it. learn from those things, mm-hmm. yeah. and say, "Now, Holy Spirit, help me make sure that it's your voice, you're leading, and you're doing, and I will accept nothing else." Mm-hmm. And because the that's that's the way the remnant has to be. We've got to be. We've got to be an army for God that only obeys words from headquarters, only moves on the orders of headquarters, and only moves. And the power of what God tells us to do, guys. Well, and you know, I think in the in the sifty, sifting in the refiner's fire, what what God does is in the process of whatever you've went through, woundedness and and um, abuse and all these things, they they mar what God's image is in us, his original image. So in the sifting, in this thing, he's getting you back to where the mantles that are getting ready to fall upon you can fit. That's right. That's what he's getting ready to do. He's taking us through things so the mantles can fit. We're going to be able to wear that mantle now. We're going to be able to walk in that because we've been through some stuff. That's right. 
And so don't be discouraged. You may feel like, man, I just don't know if I can go another step. Hang in there because God's getting ready to do something amazing. Yes, he is. Well, Father, we just pray for the remnant wherever they are in the world, Father. Let us know that everything that we went through is preparing us for what you're getting ready to do. And, Father, we just ask that your grace would take hold. Father, give us the grace to be able to put on that mantle. Give us the grace to hear your voice and your voice alone. Give us the grace to recognize your spirit and to reject any other spirit. And, Father, empower your remnant for what you have planned in the last days, we ask. In Jesus' name. Informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.